In this video, we're going to be talking about how to convert within the metric system. Before we can convert, you need to know what a base unit is. So the base units in the metric system is meters, if we're talking about length, that's represented with a lowercase m, liters for volume, that's an uppercase L, grams for mass, which is going to be a lowercase g. So when we keep referring to base units, we're talking about meters, liters, or grams. We can add different prefixes to make the number larger or smaller than this base unit. We see metrics all around us. In the US, we talk about miles, but all over the world, they use kilometers instead of miles. So miles would be the American system while kilometers would be the metric system. A DVD would be 12 centimeters across. Your lead for your pencils are gonna be in millimeters. We talk about nanometers when we're talking about the size of different atoms. You'll see ounces, pounds, and kilograms. So you see these meters, liters, and grams with their prefixes all over if you start looking for them. There's many prefixes, but we're only going to be talking about these four, but there's many more besides these four. So K or kilo, if I was revert converting that to grams, I would say that there's a thousand grams is one kilogram. If I was putting cine with grams, I would say for every one gram, there's 100 centigrams. I'm always putting the one with the bigger unit. Kilo is bigger than base, centi is smaller than base. Milli is also smaller than base, so for every one gram, I've got 1,000 milligrams. And nano, for every one gram, there's 10 to the ninth or a billion nanograms. So the only one that's bigger than base that we're going to be talking about is kilo. Everything else is smaller than the base unit. You can also see that here. Here's kilo. It's bigger than base. Here's centi. Here's milli. And then nano would be way down there. In chemistry, we deal with small things, and that's why we're mostly concerned with the smaller prefixes. If we were looking at the liters, there's a thousand liters in a kiloliter. Notice it's exactly the same conversion. The only difference is I have liters instead of grams. For every one liter, there's 100 centiliters. For one liter, there's a thousand milliliters. And for one liter, there's 10 to the ninth nanoliters. You can write 10 to the 9th, or you can say 1 times 10 to the 9th. And so finally, there's a 1,000 meters in a kilometer. For every 1 meter, there's 100 centimeters. And instead of a saying 100, you could have said 10 to the 2nd centimeter, since that's the same thing. For every 1 meter, there's a 1,000 millimeters. And for one meter, there's 10 to the ninth nanometers. Meters is the one people mess up the most because they see this little M and they want to think that it's the milli M. When there's two letters, that's when it's milli. If there's only one, then that's meters. All right, so we're going to be solving problems and converting our metric units using dimensional analysis. I know that you can convert hours to minutes without doing all of the work that we're about to do. But we're going to do it the way that I'm showing you right now because we're going to be using this process, dimensional analysis, throughout this whole unit and throughout the whole year. So we're starting with things that you're familiar with so you can double check yourself and it makes more sense right now. So the first thing you're always going to do is set up your dimensional analysis grid. It's going to look like this. If I'm drawing it, I'm just drawing a line and another line. Whatever number and unit that they give me, I'm going to place in the upper left corner. 
So all of these steps are on the top of your note sheet. And this is the first example problem. So there is a spot for this in the bottom of your note sheet is whatever unit or label is in the upper left corner must be copied diagonally to the lower right corner. This is so your units cancel out. So we had hours, so whatever unit is here must go down here. Hour, hours, they're gonna match. Put what unit you're converting to in the upper right corner, assuming you know a conversion between those two. So I had hours, and I'm going to minutes, and I know a conversion. Next, I'm going to fill in that relationship between those two labels. Well, I know that there's 60 minutes in one hour. These two, when they're on top of each other, have to equal each other. I know that 60 minutes equal one hour. The next step people forget to do, and it messes them up. Make sure that you're canceling any units that appear in both the numerator and denominator of the grid. So this hour is canceling out with this hour, leaving me with minutes, which is what I wanted my answer in. If everything besides what I wanted didn't cancel out, then I wouldn't be done. I would need to keep converting. So now I'm going to multiply everything together that it's above the grid line and divide by everything that's below the grid line. So in this case, I have 3.179 times 60 divided by 1. I just don't have to hit divide by 1 since that would give me the same number. So multiplying these two, I get that many minutes. And finally, number 8 and 9 say express your answer in the same number of sig figs as you were given in the original problem. Make sure that your answer has a unit. So what that means is this was my original number. I do not look at these for sig figs because that's a conversion factor, which means they have an infinite number of sig figs. So I had four sig figs, so I need this number in four sig figs. I had one, two, three, four. That seven is not gonna round up due to a four. So my final answer is 190.7 minutes. All right, now let's look at how to solve this problem, but with a metric setup. So just like before, I'm going to put 1.43 grams. I can write grams or I can use the abbreviation for grams. Remember that you can convert grams to kilograms by just moving the decimal. You have most likely learned that in middle school, but we're going to set them up like so with this dimensional analysis table. If you're not setting them up with the dimensional analysis table, then you're going to be getting these questions wrong. So they must be set up this way. So I have grams in the upper left corner, so I'm gonna put grams in the bottom corner. There is no reason for you to get stuck before this step because I'm gonna write whatever number in this corner, whatever unit has to go down here. I can do both of those steps without much thinking. So now I've gotta say, well, do I know a conversion for grams to kilograms? Yes. So kilograms can go on top. Now I'm going to think what was my conversion? Which one of these is larger? Well, kilogram is larger than gram, so one kilogram is 1,000 grams. We get this from that table that we wrote out a few minutes ago. So one kilogram is 1,000 grams. There's only four four units prefixes that you'll need to know, so you will need to have these memorized. Next, I'm going to cancel my units. Grams cancel with grams, and I'm left with kilograms. So I'm going to multiply, but 1.43 times 1 is still 1.43. Then I'm going to divide, so then divided by 1,000, and I get 0 0.00143 kilograms. I can write it that way, or I can always write my answer in scientific notation. Make sure you look at the worksheet or the problem. Sometimes it'll specifically tell you put your answer in scientific notation. So if it had said convert to scientific notation, then we would have had to. Otherwise, you could put either of these as your answer. Let's look at one more together. So I'm going to write my number in unit. 
Sometimes I go in and just write my number and unit first, and then I draw my chart. So then I know where my vertical line goes. So nanometers is here. So I'm gonna put nanometers on the bottom and I'm gonna to convert to meters on top since that's what I'm converting to. I look and say which one of those is bigger. Meters is bigger, so that's where my one goes. So you may wanna make note that the one goes with the bigger unit. So you remember that that's always where we're gonna put the one. And that's only because we defined the prefixes the way that we define them. If you watch another video, then they may define the prefixes differently than we did, so you'll need to be careful if you're looking on the internet at other resources. So one meter was 10 to the ninth, so I'm gonna go and write one times 10 to the ninth nanometers. So you could write it that way, or you could just say 10 to the ninth. Make sure you cancel your units. So I'm left with meters. So I'm going to multiply and then divide. So really I'm just dividing these two. Remember that when you're plugging in times 10, you'll need to use the E button. So let's look at that on the Google calculator real quick. So we need 378.4. So 378.4. Remember that we can get to this calculator by just typing in Google calculator. This is the Google calculator. So 378.4, we're going to hit divide by 1 times 10 to the ninth. So I'm going to go 1 times 10 to the ninth. Remember that I'm using this exponent, which stands for times and 10. Notice there's no times and there's no 10. I didn't type those things in. Enter. So my final answer is 3.784 E negative 7. That E stands for times and 10. So 3.784 E negative 7 is what the calculator gave me. I need four sig figs. I have it in four sig figs. So that's my answer. Make sure that you're putting a unit on your answer. When you're handwriting it, put times 10 to the negative 7th. Remember that we discussed that when you're using GoFormative, you can plug it in either of these ways. So you, in GoFormative, you could say 3.784, capital E, negative 7. Or you can do it like so. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. Restart when you're done. So you should have written the number that they gave you with the unit. Make sure that you're putting the unit as well. Liters is here, so I know I had to put liters on the bottom. What I'm converting to is gonna go on top. I look at those and say milliliters, liters, liters is bigger, so that's where my one goes. And there's 1,000 milliliters in a liter. So basically, kilo was 1,000, centi is 100, milli is a thousand and nano is 10 to the ninth. The difference is this one is bigger than base and these are all smaller than base. Since these are all smaller than base, I'm going to put the one with the base and the hundred thousand or 10 to the ninth with the prefix. I'm going to cancel my units. I'm left with milliliters. I want milliliters, so I'm good. So in this case, you should have just multiplied those. Just in case you're having trouble multiplying those in the calculator, we'll look at the Google calculator. So you should have had 4.32 times 10, so that exponent, negative four. Remember that we're gonna use the subtraction button on the Google calculator. If you're using the regular calculator, you would use the negative sign. Then we're gonna hit times 1,000. So times 1,000. And we get 0 0.432. So that's my final answer. I also could have put it in scientific notation. 
So either of those would have been correct. I'm going to pause the video and do this one. Restart when you're done. So you should have started with number given, nanograms on the bottom, and I'm converting to grams. Of those two, grams is bigger, and nano was by 1 times 10 to the 9th. I'm going to cancel nanograms out. So now I need to divide. So plugging that in, I had 890 divided by 1 times 10 to the 9th. So we get 8.9 times 10 to the negative 7th. And that would be grams. I wanted two sig figs, and my answer's in two sig figs. So that's my final answer.